Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is Friday, November the 4th. And guess what? I showed you these boxes a while back, last video, 350 PGI 29 cards. Remember, I was worried I wasn't gonna be able to get any more. Well, guess what? The source has told me they have even more. So now I'm gonna be the opposite. I'm gonna be inundated by these and I might be able to actually lower the price. We'll see. So I have the ability to make these more accessible to you guys. Shipping will remain the same. Uh, I might be able to lower the cost on these so that you guys can buy the extra sets that you will require if you're going to go ahead and use a Pro 1 with a third-party ink source and chip source like those provided by Precision Colors. Now, yesterday I spent some time looking at uh, a couple of my forums that I frequent and a subject was brought up that I had originally talked about or spoken about. And this was originally brought up by the folks from Marut, okay? And it dealt with the P800, which at that time, no one knew that people were going to have trouble resetting those refillable carts. And here's the deal. The original chips that were provided with these refillable cart sets from China worked but they only worked with the very first iteration of P800 firmware and firmware only for non-USA printers. So people in Europe, no problem. As long as you don't upgrade your firmware from the original one, that the first batch of printers that came out uh, contained, now you cannot reset these uh, or make these carts reset automatically like they are intended to do. But there was a thing that was discussed, and this had to do with the black ink switch from PK to MK and vice versa. So here's the deal, and this is applicable to every single Epson printer that uses PK and Matt K and has to switch because they only share one black channel. If you don't have sufficient amount of ink in either cart, the triggered switch will be activated. In other words, when you choose matte and you've been using glossy, and all of a sudden you choose matte, that trigger is activated. And all of a sudden the printer says, hey, you don't have sufficient black to make that switch. In other words, if you're going from matte K to photo K, for instance, you have to be able to have enough photo K ink to push out the existing matte K out of the system, out of the damper and so on, and to actually flush out the matte ink out of the printhead. And so then you're stuck. So what they recommend was this, that when you switch over to refillables, and remember this is before they realized that their systems were not gonna work anyway. In fact, no one's system is working that you would go ahead and pull out your original OEM, Matt K and PK, maybe when it was like half low. And so you save that as a, as a insurance policy that when it comes to switching your inks, you would then replace your blacks with those two. And of course you would have sufficient amount of ink to then proceed with the ink change. And then when you're done, just remove those and reinsert your refillables. Well, that would have been just fine had the system worked. But now there's been a new discovery, okay, that someone brought up. And let me, let me uh, also add that with the Pro 3800, Pro 3880, and above, okay, because remember 4800s, 4880s, and all of those large format printers that I don't deal with also have that black ink switch. And so <clears throat> it relies on simply the black ink to perform that switch because no other ink is affected. Well, guess what? Let me read a little bit about what this uh, person uh, here discovered. He was doing an ink switch because he was changing uh, from one paper type to the other on his P600 from Epson. And then he received this. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. If you notice right here, it says that yellow is low. 
notice that his mat K is pretty full. Now, these printers will not show you the other black. They will only show you the black that you are currently using. That's the same way the P800 acts. So if I am using Mat K, only the Mat K channel will be shown. If I'm using Photo K or PK, only the PK channel will be shown. And obviously we do not know how much PK he has. But notice, notice, keep an eye on that yellow. That yellow says it's low. Now, during a black ink change with any of the previous Epson printers that do that, it would not have mattered that the yellow one is low, okay? But apparently with this P600, it does matter. And so guess what? It will not perform the black ink change. Let me, let me go back to an answer given, provided for by a very, very well-known person who um, is very familiar with just about every printer there is. I won't say the name because I don't want to give them uh, any kind of uh, positive or negative publicity. I try to stay out of that. So it is not the PK ink cartridge that has the yellow triangle showing it low. Remember, it was not the PK. It was the yellow card. And the PK is not even showing because he wasn't using it. He was using Mat K. So I know, I know. What's that got to do with black ink switch? Well, it turns out that if any cartridges, cartridge and then cartridges are in low condition, the printer will refuse to make the black ink swap. Imagine that. Wow, what a pain in the, you know what that's going to be. Because here we thought that, you know, just because the cart is declared low say magenta for that matter and you want to do a black ink switch and both of your blacks are pretty full it will refuse to do the black ink switch because your magenta card is low and supposedly magenta should not even come into play it should only be flushing those either either uh, mat k or pk out of that damper so that it makes room for the uh black ink you're going to use according to what paper choice you have picked. So apparently that is not the case with the P600. And that was totally unknown to me. So now, now I know what's going on and it's kind of um, crazy. Epson is being a bit disingenuous with the P600 printer specifications for how much ink is consumed on making the black ink swap. And I have not read any reviews where the reviewer mentions this issue, but it's real. And you have arrived at this what the hell moment, as I did after a few months of P600 ownership. So depending on how many low cartridges are in the printer, the moment you want to swap, it could mean discarding several times Epson's claim amount of ink consumption. And there is no good way around it other than to plan your black ink swaps for times where none of your other cartridges are down to the 5% level on the ink indicators. Oh, option, don't swap very often or buy another P600 to have. One dedicated for photo black and one dedicated for matte black. Oh, that is ridiculous. All right, I just wanted to bring that up to you guys. I hope you guys understood what I was trying to describe here. In the older printers, even the R3000, it doesn't matter. It only affects the blacks. You have to have sufficient amount of black to make those switches, but it doesn't really affect the other colors. So you could have a magenta that's low and it will still allow you to perform that black. Now, maybe after you do the black ink swap and you try to print, it will tell you to you know, insert a brand new magenta. But what if you have three or four cards that are low. You can't even do the swap first because even at low, you should be able to print quite a number of prints until you reach empty. And remember, these cards have a cushion. They always have a little bit of ink left, even when empty. So this is crazy to force you to have to replace several other low cards 
which in the case of the P800, the case of the Pro 3880s and 3800s, low means you still have physically about 20 ml at least of ink in your cart. Remember, the 80 ml official carts contain 90 ml of ink. So that is crazy. All right. Wow, that was mind boggling to me. But um, just keep that in mind, you guys, anybody that's going to get a P600. That's the little um, unknown uh, little fact about the black ink switch. And a lot of you guys choose to not switch ever. And of course, referring to an older video that I just did, if you want to do that and you want to go with a third party route, then it is recommended that you um, fill whatever black card you choose never to use with something like PSO Flush from Inkjet Mall. Do a ink charge. You have to get the adjustment program to be able to do that. And that way you flush out the black or just print black on matte setting. If you're going to get rid of the matte ink or print glossy and just a black document and just print, print, print until you only see pink. PSO Flush is dyed pink. So once you flush out the ink, then you can do a switch back to the black that you're going to be using. It's a little complicated and it's quite a, a workaround for those of you who will know for sure that you will never be using, say, glossy papers or matte type papers. And that way you can just clear out the black that you don't want out of the lines. And then you can just keep the line and dampers primed with the actual black you're going to be using forever and ever amen so that's how it is that's all i can suggest with that little problem and uh, that should keep you going and will actually prevent that problem with the uh, malfunctioning switch valve or black switch valve so that is it i hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe and share and like as always Remember to support the channel whichever way you choose to do so, either by clicking on ads or throwing in a couple of dollars with the donation support button. And I would appreciate that tremendously, and so will the channel. This is how we survive here. All right, so until the next time, everyone, happy printing. Bye-bye.